Aha, all right. Hmm, I can see we have some different ideas. Actually, uh, today is probably a little bit rare. I can see we have a, a few dumplings. Hmm. Okay. But uh, I can see many different opinions, but uh, just like Future here has mentioned, I guess uh, nobody here want to connect D6, am I right? Nobody will be going to play D6 here, is that right? Sorry, just uh, want to confirm. Is there anyone who want to play D6, connect? Okay. So nobody, so silence means nobody, or I prefer you say no. <laughs> okay. Okay, so uh, here on this topic today, this is the first topic I want, or the first principle here, or let's say the, the first important thing I should mention about the middle game today. And uh, I want to talk about reading. Uh, either you are, you have, uh, let's say, uh, heard from some teachers or some strong player or professional players. They all tell you in Go how important reading is. Yeah, they probably all have told you about that. And uh, uh, so, yeah, no doubt reading is an important part in Go. But uh, what I want to mention is uh, many, pe many people, okay, in their games, they overemphasize on that. And then in a relatively open situation, and they are doing reading go in their game. And then basically reading go is like, okay, when black player, yeah, thinking about what he should do in this situation, I play the peep, you're gonna connect, and then I jump at F4 here. Okay, you have a heavy group, I'm attacking you, all good. So black, this peep is a big mistake, and it is an outcome of reading go. And so normally, let's say, you were gonna hear, yeah, facing to this kind of situation, you can see his reading goal. And then let's say that move is normally the number one issue you should prevent uh, yourself. Uh, me, uh, what, what young what, uh, shows. Sorry? Yeah, so that's the number one thing that we, that's the number one thing that we shouldn't do. And then, okay, so here, yeah, uh, first here I'm talking about the negative part of reading goal. And uh, uh, the second thing here, I actually want to ask a question to all our viewers here. Mm, at the bottom left area, which area is the most important area? as your judgment. So, okay, I might actually cut it into, hmm, uh, let's say uh, A area, let's say B area, let's say C area, and uh, maybe D area, okay, like they like, they like that. Okay, I cut it into four different districts. Okay, so which one to you is the, the most important one? Those four. Mm -hmm. Aha, okay, here I see many different opening. Why D is really important? I see many, many D here. Oh, 2C and 2D, I see. Why do you think D is important? Mm. C is easier to get. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay, so here, yeah, I get it. D is big, but here, let's look at D, this area, uh, especially, hmm, let's say, around this 
let's say, okay, maybe around here. Why do easily put a stone somewhere there? Black can only go backwards because there's no way to, let's say, to kill that stone, right? If white play a stone somewhere there, or maybe white starts to simulate honey. Yeah, there's no way to actually capture that stone. So black can only defend the line there. And uh, so because that area is open, even D, even if D looks big, it's not that, that easy for black to make territory there, right? Yes, that, that is what I'm saying here. I don't think D is uh, a big area. Yeah, no doubt C here is big. Yeah. And here, I guess if we talk about second, I think the second will be B here. Because B, okay, of course, around L2, it is still open. But that area is, is like, it's, it's relatively easier to close. So it is easier to become territory. Yeah, that is the point here. Okay, so here, if, uh, for, yeah, for example, here, about how much should answer, we just uh, directly take corner. It is a possibility. Or, for example, you will play something like this. Yes, okay. So, basically, black is playing on an interesting area. We don't need to care about that at all. And we just need, need to think about what is the most important area in this yeah, let's say on, on, on this board, and then we just do it right away. And then we are never going to fall into the trap of reading. And then based, I'm just saying here, we also know how we should continue here as white. So basically, he played a peep, but we are going to ignore it completely. Okay, but here, I just want to, yeah, let's say about this example, this one is just the start of the lecture today. For this one, the most important thing here is reading is important. And reading is important in the, in the middle game. But if we say, I read this one variation, I play here, you play there, I play there, you play there, and maybe an even long variation. Okay, it's good to me, let's do it. That is reading goal, and that hurts. Because that, you have to answer a question. Actually, it's a simple question to answer. It is, what if my opponent doesn't do it? Yeah, let's say if in your long variation, there's one specific move. So what if he doesn't do it? Okay, so earlier Dave said he still remembers this one. So this mistake is uh, made by a professional player. <laughs> of course, yeah, it's, uh, yeah it's, it's made by EDF Pro. Mm. Okay, I guess about this first example is clear. So to me here, the correct answer is this one. But if you say here, I guess here, if you play this one, to me is fine. Although here, uh, as you can see here, bottom is still kind of big, right? Yeah, this bottom is still big. And even if, for example, okay, I can show probably a little bit more. Probably black connect here. You may say you can jump from here. I mean, it is still kind of big. Yeah, but I would say this one is a pass. I would say this one is a pass because uh, let's say this area C and B to get a balance is not that easy. Uh, well, yeah, but that is because the D area become deeper into the bottom. <laughs> yeah, because it's, it become deeper and so Basically, white can still, let's say, reduce like this, and black just defend like this. It is still. Uh, I'm not sure here if you understand me. If it is just a pure center, pure center is not so big. But if it is connected with side, that can be bigger. That's that's the same as any kind of moil. So that D area is kind of like connected with both things here. Um, Let's say this exchange as a reduction to the bottom is very limited. I'm not sure if this is understandable. Yeah, so imagine if uh, the bottom side, uh, let's say below third line, it is not black territory at all. And it's just that the area it itself is not big at all. Okay, is that clear?
Okay. Sort of. Okay. Mm, I know that you still feel like that. Uh, okay, I'll come back to. You still feel like, for example, this D area is big. Um, well, uh, I guess uh, probably, yeah, let's say in my, in my lesson with my students, sometimes this happens too. I don't think here I can convince you today. I just want to, let's say, you have my opinion here and you're going to think about it. Normally, in Go, if it's a pure center, it is considered as something not so big. If it's pure center, unless it is the pure center, and we say, I'm only one last move away from getting this entire area as solid territory. That one last move could be a big move, but before that, is it, it is not. Mm. Oh yeah, okay. Uh, I guess uh, here, uh, okay. There we, we have S S S S S. Okay, what you have mentioned is probably more right. So here we, yeah, because here we do need to actually get a, a balance between B and C here. So probably here you suggest B plus C makes sense. Mm. Okay. Uh, and the four, yeah, let's say here, uh, when you say you know the principle, but uh, you are still not so sure, I understand you uh, because our feeling is against it, right? Or it's better your feeling is against it. Uh, I have some students who basically tell me exactly your this kind of feeling. My suggestion here is uh, I want you to follow the, follow the principle when you are playing the games by yourself. Yeah, when you are playing the games yourself. Even though it is against your feeling, but please try it because feeling can be adjusted. It's just like, uh, uh, you know, that sometimes, uh, like, uh, okay, uh, I want to know a girl, and then basically somebody has introduced me a girl. Okay. I do not know her. The time when I met her for the first time, I don't feel much. But then, okay, I just get to date her for a few more times and then get to know her more, and then the feeling is fostered. And then we are together. If you understand my this kind of uh, uh, description, I mean, here, as for principle and the feeling, if it is against each other, I would strongly recommend you to do like this. Mm. In this sense, it is. Yeah, in this sense, it is like dating. <laughs> Yeah, and uh, yeah, you need to, yeah, let's say you need to gradually believe this is, because here, there's one thing that is different. When we say dating is a girl, you we are not sure if uh, she is the right one. But here, with this girl, yeah, just I just said earlier, uh, uh, earlier, uh, I forgot, oh, really? Yeah, he has mentioned he knows the principle. So basically, we already know this girl is supposed to be the right person. She's supposed to be the one. And then all what we need to know, all what we need to do is just to get our feeling on her. And that's it. Yeah. Okay. But if, uh, yeah, if you do not mind, I'm going to move here and we are going to go to the second example. Okay. Okay, and the second example is uh, this situation. And uh, I probably should show a few moves earlier here. So yeah, let's say here at the bottom, there's a code. Black takes a code to thread white bottom group. White turn here, black connects a code, and the white bottom group is not alive, so white run. And at this moment, black invaded the red, the red side. When the fighting is at the bottom, now my number one question is, do you know why black is here?
when we have the farting at the bottom, and as you can see here, this is a weak group. This is a weak group. And black suddenly play on the right. This is weird, right? Because this one looks like it has nothing to do with this major battle. Look like this, that, right? Uh, okay, well, uh, let's now first do this, maybe. Uh, okay, we, we, yeah, we, we can probably talk about that topic a little later. First, what do you think white should do now? Hmm. Yeah, but let's first talk about what one should do now. Mm hmm Okay, As I already see many good answers here. But uh, what are you going to do here? I only see two maybe yeah too clear answer <coughs> ah aha okay okay not too bad uh we have over 10 viewers here and uh, can we get one more okay Aha, uh -huh, 05, okay. Okay, that's already pretty good. But here, uh, no one wants to answer this one. Nobody wants to answer this one, am I right? Okay. uh okay so okay so here okay i first want to explain what black did here he's doing a reading go and uh, it's actually not so difficult to explain it's a very straightforward reading go so black if white answer here black honey cut atari you run put here python atari capital connect so what group is in? This is a very straightforward reading goal, right? And this is actually the reason why he, we are in the group fighting between A and B, and Black suddenly played on the right side. Because he, yeah, I read it, if I do this, you answer there, and I do this, you answer there, da, 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 da. okay, all the way, I kill you. Yeah, and uh, yeah, you get the right side, but who cares, I kept capture your dragon, I win the game. Yeah, and so Black did it. Therefore, when the opponent has any kind of strange behavior, so this will look strange, right? Yeah, any kind of strange behavior, normally we say behind every single strange behavior, there's a conspiracy. All right. Then, yeah, you may not even know what is his conspiracy, but normally the most obvious move is normally what he wanted, and that's supposed to be the one that you rule out. Yeah, and so here I actually I'm glad to see many people has a very clear mind. So here group is important, and so we should do connection. That's pretty good. Yeah, this move to me is pretty good. If, even if it may not necessarily be the best, but it's pretty good because here you know what is important. Okay, but here you can also see black is doing reading go here, and here I will show you what is the best punishment. So here the fighting is between A and B, and here I hope you notice. Um, oh, okay, I probably should. Okay, 
This black here, he has a two space jump. Yeah, there's also some problem on his shape. So, uh, not necessarily J8. Okay, J8 is probably also a bad shape there. Yeah, so white here, strongest one is attach and cut. Yeah, this is the strongest here to punish black that two space jump. If black say, well, I'm still gonna attack you. Black is normal. And the white here, Atari. Uh, here, I have to say, it's a little bit difficult, black, because uh, if black run, white connect, black, <laughs> I don't know, probably still need to connect. And then when white push, you can see basically this is a black collapse, right? So basically like this, there's already no way for black to continue. So black cannot do that. And uh, black may, this is our attacking, give us a panel key. But uh, like this, uh, this is also terrible, even if you connect and uh, like this, because the white already got a panel key, and a black has two groups kind of like this, right? So this also looks pretty bad. And uh, so unlikely this is a choice. So uh, look like black can only do this one. And white get Atari here. And connect. So white we're gonna get the head here. And now this invasion looks even more strange. So this is the best punishment to black. And this is the punishment to reading go. I hope here you'll see, yeah, let's say in this kind of picture, you can see how much reading code may hurt. So reading is important, but in a relatively open situation, let's not worship reading. Because uh, let's say, yeah, we, yeah, people does say reading is important, but we also say judgment is about reading. So you need to actually have a judgment on what is important first. And then you do the, the important thing, the most important thing on the board. And one thing. Yeah, in that way, we can prevent ourselves to do reading go, and we can identify when the opponent is doing reading go. Okay, I hope this example is clear. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, that's something bot was uh, doing all the time, right? If a human can one day have the reading ab ability as if you are a bot, I guess that's doable. So reading Go will be the only way to play Go. But before that, we can't do it. <laughs> we are not bot. Mm. Okay, let's move on to the next one, okay? Okay, so uh, uh, here, here white is actually running his group, and here black played the attachment. <laughs> uh, regarding to this topic about the zero playout, uh, I remember uh, there is one side that is called um, uh, Lila Zero One Playout. Probably there's also Katago One Playout. But uh, yeah, I, I let's say there's yeah. I normally the one I use is uh, Lila Zero One Playout, and uh, I use that to practice. So I play against Lila Zero One Playout. I think I rarely win. I rarely win. So basically. Uh, I have asked my friend, what does one playout mean? So my friend has told me one playout means uh, the bot doesn't read and he basically completely uses uh, judgment. And uh, yeah, so here, this actually tells how important judgment is. If in our mind, our mind is clear on what is important and we, yeah, and we are capable to manage normal shapes. Shape, yeah, shape is actually another thing that is important. Then, actually, in a relatively open situation, uh, we don't need to actually rely on reading too much, and then you don't need, need many play out. <laughs> okay, but yeah, let's come back here. So black just did this attempt. 
What do you think? Yeah, I understand that. So what will be the direct answer? Aha, uh -huh. okay. Aha, uh -huh. okay. I still have to ask this question. So here, yeah, the direct answer, it feels like there's a trap, okay. So this is my question. What is the direct answer and what is the trap? That will gonna be helpful for us to know what is going on here. Yeah, because let's say earlier, there are uh, those kind of reading goal women not necessarily figure out what is his planning here. But this one, I think we do. Or we can figure out what is the black uh, yeah, plan, uh, planning for, yeah, what he's aiming at. Aha, uh -huh, okay. Correct, okay, Chelsea, that's correct, yeah. So what Black is planning for, normally in this kind of attachment is, regardless of how your honey, I cut you. And uh, between those two honey, which one, to you is more like what he's planning for? Yes. Right. Yeah, so it is the more like here. Black is planning for white answer. Sorry. Uh, honey here, and he crossed that. And this looks 68. I have one question here. We have something called a driving Tatsuji, right? Can we use it here? Okay, and is that good? Yeah, so driving Tatsuji is this one. And then we put this right. And then we put here. And look like we can get this Atari and uh, capture those two stones. So we are like this, right? But like this, the problem is still going to get turned. And uh, his outside is strong, so white too much, right? Especially black, we're gonna play the next move, so probably black, we're gonna do okay. I will probably play this after about Atari, maybe. Uh, this is called a driving Tasuji. Yeah, driving Tatsuji. So starting from here and then all the way put through. Driving Tatsuji. Mm. Yeah. So look like that way you pay too much. Okay, so this is actually what a black arrow is planning for. Yeah. And uh, okay, I uh, here I just want to remind normally here in uh if you can figure out what the opponent is planning for what his reading is you know here you yeah let's say there is a chance you can trap the opponent can we trap the opponent here even though he set us a trap can we do a counter trap Aha, uh -huh, h4. But h4, I guess black will just gonna turn j3, right? Yeah, I'm saying that is like a corner, but uh, it wouldn't hurt much. Uh, what can capture t? L2 directly. No, no, you can't capture those two directly because of why the shortage of at the bottom. Yeah.
Do I need to show <laughs> about the liberty? J6 to prepare the honey. Uh -huh. I'm seven. Aha, uh -huh. okay, 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 okay. I... Okay, I will show what White did in the end. Okay, to me, that's pretty. Okay, in the game, White knows that's a trap, and White plays the honey still. And then Black cut. Okay, remember there earlier there was a variation in which White captured the stone but pay a lot in the center, right? And what White did is White pushed now. Can you see what White is doing here? I see, I call it a counter reading goal. <laughs> yeah, okay, you play J3 first. To me, that's also a possibility. That means you pay a little bit at the bottom and get yeah, again in the center. And this one is the other way around. So, because here, there's just no way Black can save the two stone anymore. So white is getting at the bottom and pay a little bit in the center. So you have to pay a little bit one way or the other and uh, yeah and the way yeah you you pay on one thing and you gain on the other. To me here, if you push at J3 first, that's that's definitely a possibility too. Yeah. So here actually is uh, yeah pretty awkward for black. But I think here black just has to choose the center and give the two stone to white. So it just has to come like this. So white still pay in the center, but not as much as the other picture, the driving one. So this okay, so this example is about when black does this attachment, he is doing reading go. And we can see. Well, that driving is kind of expensive, right? I mean, because you, you're going to pay a lot of stones outside. And actually, eventually, you just get the two stones at the bottom still. That driving is pretty expensive. Yeah, even though we say driving Kazuji is cool, but uh, it spent something. So we want to save that part if possible. <laughs> OK, anyways, so here, Black is doing reading go. And here we know he's, yeah, we can see he's doing really good. Otherwise, this move is strange, right? Normally, people will gonna play like cap. And here he's doing attachment. So he is already, so yeah, he, this kind of attachment basically consider the surrounding black has so many stones. Black is basically, has basically made a commitment. So he's saying, Your honey, I'm gonna cut. Yeah, that is the, what he's planning to do. And since this is what he's planning to do, you know, uh, this is an opportunity to trap him. Yeah, he set your trap, but you can counter trap him. Mm. Okay, so here, yeah, this is yeah, this is another one, and you can see here how much this reading goal can potentially cost. So initially, white is a weak group, black can attack white, and suddenly, not only white is alive, white. Capture what black two stones at the bottom, take away black territory to live. Mm. Okay, but I guess this example is clear. Okay, so from the above examples, I hope you notice how much does reading go hurt. Once again, reading is important in go, but in a relatively open situation. What we cannot do is, I read a variation, it looks good to me, and let's do it. You can do that, but yeah, let's say if you say I do that reading, you'd better ask a few what ifs and then a few other variations. So to prevent, the op okay, I read that this variation is good to me, but the opponent didn't really follow my plan. Well, that is normally when there is just a one way forward. That is Tasuji. <laughs> yeah, normally here, in a relatively open situation, we normally do not have that. And that is why here I emphasize on 
relatively open situation. And so important in a relatively open situation, please do not do reading go. Okay. Okay, let's come to the next. Okay, this is the board situation, and uh, either better, yeah, you, you on this board situation, uh, black red side looks pretty ugly, <laughs> right? So the, let's say what happened early in this game was, uh, yeah, so black play the extension and white attach, so like this, and the black insists on push and cut, so to make it complicated, and white cut here. And then white decent and the black doesn't want to want white to gain twice. So black choose chose to endure this dumpling. And then it comes to this board situation. Okay, question. What are you gonna do here as white? Aha, uh -huh. okay. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I will tell you about that later. But I, any other suggestion here on what I should do? Where is P8? Ah, okay. P8, I see. Okay. Mm. Okay, any other, anyone else? Any suggestion here? Aha, uh -huh. okay. Okay, I see a few suggestions on the right side in general. Hmm. Okay, let me ask. You know, in the middle game, I guess there's one thing I probably do not need to explain, and you all know. Uh, in the middle game, uh, I, yeah, when we are making decisions, normally we're supposed to, to uh, concentrate, uh, concentrate on doing one thing at a time and figure out what is the most important thing on board, and just one thing. I guess this is something you already know. I hope. Yeah, because this is the way we make decisions. So, with this in mind, what is the most important one thing on the board at the moment? Mm -hmm. Which groups? Which groups? Yeah, that's important though. Okay. Yes, I think. 
Aha, uh -huh, all right. So that's your question, huh? Okay. Mm. Okay, so here, uh, we the better uh, discuss a little bit about this situation here. Uh, let's say here, uh, I, I would prefer we start with the black, with black here. So, question number one, let's, let's start with something easy, okay? What do you think about a black A group, this dumpling? One hundred percent alive. Okay, that's very good. And then how about mm, this group? Okay, and uh, um, I have actually asked some of my students to try this out, and uh, they have given me some feedback. And let me here try again. Assuming a group that is 100% alive, already twice existing, and you give the score as 10, a group that is completely dead, there's just absolutely no way you can possibly make it live, you give the score 0, okay? And then basically, any group in theory doesn't have twice yet, it is basically between 0 to 10. Can you give a score to B, please? Okay. I know you don't think about it like, like that. Could you try, please? Mm. Okay, so many people gave it like six or seven. Okay, uh, but okay, we temporarily do not talk about white yet. We just talk about the black itself. So we say something like six to seven, which means black is not too weak, right? Black doesn't have twice, but not too weak. I guess uh, that's the correct translation, right? Okay, then let's talk. Let's think about white here. Okay, no, like, yeah, like here I talk about black first. I would say it is here, it is important. Now we know that A is completely alive, B is not weak. All right, and we know that here, um, what those stones are cutting, are cutting stones that cut black into pieces in general. Yeah, they cut black into pieces. But if a black group is not so weak, then the value to keep white, those cutting stones, is at the same time limited, right? Because uh, we have the cutting stones here, and uh, we keep the cutting stone, black will be kept separated, and then black is kept weak. But if black is already relatively strong, then we keep them, we are just, uh, let's say, keeping points in general. So the value is less, right? Which basically means center stones will we keep the keep them uh, keep them or not is optional. It's not like we have to keep it. And therefore, earlier I see many answers that suggesting we play anything on the right side. To me, that's correct. And uh, regarding to can we play here? I think we can play here, because here I don't think black can invade on the right side. We can play here, and someone has mentioned this one, to me it's fine. If you say you play here, to me it's fine, okay? But in the game, okay, I should say, in the game, white plays this one, and black nobby, and white save it, and black played here, here in the game. You can see this is definitely not right for white, right? 
Yeah, because initially it is something we can potentially sacrifice it. And here, why the thing? Well, I'm not gonna sacrifice it. I definitely want to keep it. When black top side group is not that weak, and he put his own group on the right side, really weak here. So let's come back to this situation. This situation, yeah, let's say we need to identify when it comes to this situation. What is a group? What is a group? Who is the one we need to take responsibility for? And the one we need to take responsibility, we have to take responsibility. The ones we don't have to, we don't easily do. Okay? And then after we identify that, we follow the principle, that, and this is the important one, in the middle game, groups are our first consideration. So here, right, right side is a group, for sure. Center is not necessarily a group. Do you understand me? Center is not necessarily a group. It may, but not necessarily. And that is why we have to take care of the big group first, and so why it needs to play on the right. I hope that's clear. And here, the, yeah, mainly from this example, I want to go here. In the middle game, groups are our first consideration. Uh, R5 is probably the best, I agree. Yeah, here, in this case, R5 is the best. Because uh, black has this one stone here, and the white has many center move around it, I don't think black can invade on the right at the, at the moment. So likely, black will need to answer why this attachment. Yeah, this one, this one, I agree with you. But uh, here, on this board, if white has played anything on the right side, to me, is uh, acceptable. Hmm. Okay. So I hope that if this one is clear, let's come. Okay. Okay. So uh, this is the situation here. And the white has just played, yeah, let's say here, white has just played this jump so to fix his shape. Question is what black should do here. Ah, I'm sorry, free Atari. Oh, okay. Well, to make it easier, uh, okay, what black should do here? <laughs> I know, uh, yeah, but yeah, let's say it is like this. Hmm. Hmm. You are saying R6 and aiming for the batch. Ah, okay. Mm. So you are talking about Q5 vet, but then Black Atari, uh, I don't know what Black is doing. If you just want to take the corner, you can directly play like R4 or S4 to take the corner. Hmm. Aha, interesting. J9. Mm. Okay, so um, how many groups do we have here?
Yeah, because here we are in the middle game, and we have just talk about it. Talk about it. Groups are our first consideration in the middle game. So I have asked a question: How many groups do we have here on this board? Hmm. Okay, four looks right. So basically. Those four? Mm. Correct. Okay, so we have four here. Mm. None of them have already have two eyes, am I right? None of them. Okay, so if none of them have two eyes yet, uh we need to follow in the middle game groups our first consideration in that case we want to play the move that affect as many groups as possible as many groups as possible so by following this what do you think is black craft move You mean L7? Because M7 is occupied. Okay. Mm. Okay. That's pretty good. Yeah, as my criteria here, this is the one. Like this, black more or less connect himself and a separate white. Okay. So this is not so difficult, right? Okay. Then in the game, black played here. What do you think? play L6. Mm. Please. Uh -huh. Yeah, I will show what happened in the game here. So white did the attachment, black honey, white Novi, and the black need to make the corner live. And then white card and black what Atari and uh, connect. Yeah, that's what happened. Either. Yeah, this is what happened in the game here. So, this is pretty good. What do you think this is pretty good? Yeah, black are live everywhere. Yeah, in a sense, it looks like black is pretty good. Black get the corner territory. Black get white four stones, and black is alive everywhere. Black get uh, is alive everywhere. Black get point. Is this good? Mm. So here, of course, black is alive. White is alive too. And white like this, potentially the center can be influenced. So white also gets some. And initially, if black has done this, Black is the more in this fighting is at the more dominating position to attack white. So when I'm the attacker, in the end, I leave everything is not an achievement. Rather, the opponent is alive everywhere. That is an achievement to him. And one thing, one thing important you also have mentioned in this variation. This is what happened in the game. It is white center next. White also get a center here, which is important. So this way, this 
clearly actually black lost something. Because black is thinking only about his own safety and thinking about to defend other points. Okay, so yeah, but here to prevent this kind of problem, we just need to, okay, in the, in the middle game, first we identify who are the groups, and then we try to find out the move that affect as many groups as possible. And you can see this move almost only affect one group, right? It does affect group one. And why does this move is affecting directly like three groups? And that is how important that area is, even though that area, it looks like there's no territory. I hope that's clear about this analysis. Okay. Okay, and finally, we come to some, uh, something fun. I hope it is uh, more or less fun, but we are still on this topic, okay? Mm. All right, this is a board situation. What do you think? <laughs> yeah, it's a little bit polar polarized. <laughs> All right. But what are you going to do as white? Um, no. Oh, all three. Okay. Uh, okay. About the white lower side, probably I should play a little bit uh if we consider it might be ugly okay when you look at it it looks ugly but the white can potentially play m4 and uh, that is unlikely not sunny so that can be why the sources uh, together with n3 to make i shape at the bottom so when you ask uh, is why the bottom dead I don't think what you're going to die there. Yeah, it's ugly, but uh, we take M4 into account, what can live? Hmm. Are you with Tanuki and play somewhere in the center? Why? Because you think center is big or. Oh, huh. mm. Old Hmm. Oh, twelve. Ah, okay, 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 okay. Uh, okay, I've, I'd better first comment about O12 here. Surrounding black, so center is basically black palace. So when you are inside of the enemy's palace, yeah, imagine you are walking inside of the enemy's palace. You probably want to walk cautiously, small steps to alert about any kind of potential danger to prevent any kind of uh, ghost to attack you from any direction. Therefore, normally inside the opponent palace, big steps are not recommended. So O12, you play the two space jump, uh, you know, that's risky and I wouldn't recommend that. Okay, that's, uh, yeah, because like here, uh, I O12. O12 is not recommended. Because of that, mm. 
I understand L40, all right. Okay, and here, this is what I should tell. Um, the principal has already told us, in the middle game, groups are first consideration, okay? So I still have to ask the uh, question, why the both of relying on M4, why the is alive? Who are the weak groups on the board? Only one, and that is uh, L12, right? Yeah, I'll have only one. All right. Um, when you do have a weak group there, and uh, okay, I want you to actually think about the principle again. I yeah, because you know, in, I'm trying to translate it to the accurate wording. the The wording is in the middle game. Groups are our first consideration. Does that mean? Whenever there's a weak group, we have to play around with the weak group. Uh, not necessarily. Uh, the principle is uh, in the middle game, Groups are our first consideration. Actually, the sentence behind it, behind that is a point second. Yeah, that is the principle. But here, uh, yeah, let's say I want to emphasize about the word. Okay, in the middle game, groups are our first consideration. Yeah, actually, I simplified that. The, like, I think the uh, paragraph is like, uh, 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 yeah, let's say the whole package is supposed to be all the minor factors, including uh, weak groups, cutting point, weak shape in the center, like two space jump, or gamma, gamma, or elephant eye. They supposed to be the first, uh, our first consideration in in the middle game. Yeah, and I simplify that as groups because uh, basically a cutting point means potentially I will have groups. Those kind of uh, weak shapes in the center, two space jump, uh, all gamma, gamma, elephant eye, they can be potentially separated and then I will have big groups. Yeah, that is why I simplify two big groups. Okay, but anyways, they are our first consideration. Okay, why we say they are our first consider consideration, what does that mean? Here, it requires you to correctly understand that because otherwise, when you're going to follow that, it, it will be whenever there's a weak group, I play around the weak group. Do you understand me? Okay, good. Mm -hmm. So when we have a big group, our eyes will always be on the big group, but we are going to evaluate about in case our weak group, let's say first one will be how weak my weak group is. Can that even be attacked? For example, in the last example, we have given black on the top side has a weak group. And uh, I remember you guys have given the score as six or seven, which basically means that group doesn't have twice, but it's not too weak. Or in other words, that is a group not so easy to attack, although it's weak. All right. So yeah, that is the one thing we should consider. And if we have only that big group on the board, we probably, yeah, then likely we want to consider looking rather than to play on that group. Okay, and there's a second consideration. Second is, I have a really big group. Yes, I do, but it wouldn't die. And the opponent can come to attack me. What he has earned is not comparable to the tanuki move I'm gonna play. Since my tanuki move is, yeah, in this case, normally it requires it to be unique. The tanuki move needs to be unique. So it is really big. And on board, there's nothing else that is comparable to that. Okay, and if that is the case, you should also tanuki. Okay, and this basically gave you the full picture about in the middle game, groups are our first consideration. 
not whenever there's a big group, we play around the big group. Okay, and uh, I want to tell here, I know you really worry about that. And I want to tell you here, this is a pro game and the professional player doesn't. And in the game, he played R7. He played R7, but not because of, of uh, uh, how weak white right side group is. White right side group is alive. Yeah, that, yeah, uh, yeah, that is not related. Rather, this is too big. This is too big. And then the center stone has one judgment. You can attack me. You cannot kill me. And uh, you cannot really get as much as this one move value. Okay. Yeah, so here, mainly I want to further explain about the principle here. So to prevent us to make the mistake. Uh, okay, so already told us in the middle game, group our first consideration. So whenever there's a big group, I had to move on the big group. Not necessarily. Not necessarily. Okay. And here you already know in which condition you shouldn't. Or in which can consider in what kind of situation you should consider not to. Uh, to be objective here, IL-12 shouldn't die. But I understand because I have some uh, students who are uh, like, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, they're at a Q level. And I can understand you tell me here, you may die at IL-12. In that case, as your judgment, you probably should do something more like this. So you are gonna, you're gonna make the judgment based on Let's say, what do you think is right? So probably to you, then you, you, you're going to do this. And to this pro, his answer is this one. And uh, my feeling here is why wouldn't die in the center. Mm. So here, yeah, uh, I just want to emphasize the principle told us it is uh, the groups are first consideration. If you have considered about the big group first, and you think you do need to add a move, you add a move. And if you have considered, you don't think you, you add a move, you don't. But you must put the big group as your first consideration. And in this game, I give this one as an example, because White has considered about the big group first. And as White judgment, his group is fine, and that is how he chose to Tanuki. Do you understand me? Here, I'm just explaining about the principle and what you need to follow in general. Clear? Okay. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, yeah, let's say, uh, 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 about the continuation of the game, I would recommend you to check on Go. go uh, okay, let, let me see which game is this. Uh, this is uh, 20, uh, 2018, April 1st, between Cho Chi Kuen and O Main. And you can probably check out, let's say, on Go for Go about this. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So uh, I hope about this lecture, I have introduced two major principles here. And the first one is about, okay, in a relatively open situation, yeah, in Go, reading is important, but in a relatively open situation, we don't easily do reading Go. We don't easily do reading Go here. And uh, if uh, you want to read, you would better ask yourself a, a, a few what if. It is about what if he play here? What if he is he, he, not going to answer this? Uh, sorry, just one moment. Mm. Yeah, you'd better ask a few what ifs, okay, before you say, okay, this is good, let's do it, okay? So that's, uh, uh, yeah, that is if you really want to read it, uh, want to read it. But uh, yeah, you just read uh, one or two versions and you say, this is good, let's do it. It can hurt a lot, okay? And the second one, it is about in the middle games, groups are our first consideration. And I hope, let's say, with the examples, especially this one, 
I have explained to you about the, what does this principle mean. Remember, it's not like whenever I have weak group or there's, there are weak groups, and then I'm going to put the stone around the weak group. Not necessarily. You need to consider and then make your own judgment. You can't do that blindly. I hope that's all clear. For today, I just mainly want to introduce those two principles. And I hope you learn those principles, you understand them correctly, and then in your games, you are capable to implement them. Okay? Okay, um, are there any questions? Yeah, if there's no more question, I would suggest a video. Okay. Yeah, thanks. And I'm looking forward to talk to you again in our next lecture. Okay. Thanks.